Hey guys, Shane here, Pocket Knife Review. Um, doing this video today on one of my on one of my favorite knife companies. Um, it's uh, Medford Knife and Tool. Um, guys, I don't own any Medford knives at the moment. I do plan to own a Medford knife, um, but I want to go over some of the reasons why they're one of my favorite knife companies out there. Um, you know, Medford is a smaller knife company. They don't mass produce, you know, tens of thousands of knives a week or month, whatever. Um, but what they do build is overbuilt, hard use, incredibly cool, badass folders. Um, are they necessary? No, I, I don't know that anything about this knife is necessary, guys. Um, you know, it's got probably my least favorite handle material, which is titanium. I know the majority of you would disagree with that. I'm just not a huge fan. Um, you know, and it's probably got a little more titanium than it needs. This is not the best example of a, an extremely overbuilt Medford knife, but it is a, it's a great example of a quality Medford knife. This knife was designed by Mick Strider. Um, this knife was built by Medford Knife and Tool. And uh, when I say it was built, it was very much overbuilt. Um, it's too heavy. It's probably a little too big. It's probably not for you. Um, that's a pretty broad statement to claim that a knife's not for you, and I'm not even sure of who's watching this video. But for the majority of people out there, th this is this knife is completely unnecessary, and that's one of the reasons why I love it. Um, you know, the majority of people out there driving lifted F350s don't need them; they're not necessary. But it doesn't make them any less cool. And I feel like this is kind of that same category this knife falls into. Uh, does it mean that you're compensating from something? Whatever, man. People that say stuff like that are the people who don't own things like that or can't afford things like that. Um, but anyway, like I said, um, one of the main reasons why I love Medford knives is because they're obnoxious and they're unnecessary and they're too big and they're too thick and they're too heavy. Um, all that adds up to to badass to me. It, it, it's just a cool knife. Um but another one of the reasons why I love Medford Knife and Tool is because you guys can already guess because they're an American company employing American people using as much American product as they can to produce a knife and uh, and I, I like that. I'm always going to like that. Um, is uh, Are Medford's cheap? Hell no. They're not cheap, man. They're, they're, they're expensive. Um, they cost way more than they're worth. That's just the honest truth. Because whenever you're figuring worth, you have to take a, all the parts that are necessary to build a, a, a product and the labor that it takes to build that product, add all that together, the sum of its parts, what's it worth? I don't know. I can't put a number on it, but it's well below what the selling price of this knife is. However, um, I've said this many times before, I put a great deal of value in the fact that it is made by a veteran in the United States and employs Americans and puts food on their tables. So I love that. Um, one of the, the other things I haven't really thought about um, until recently that I appreciate about Medford Knife and Tool, and if you've watched Greg's, not his latest video, but the one about, um, you know, the Chinese taking over the knife market, whatever, I don't remember what it was called, but, um, when you really think about it, guys, th there are a lot of so-called knife designers out there now. Guys, I, I've got a pencil and a piece of paper within inches of me. I could design a knife right now. I could just draw out a knife and I could call a company in China. And, you know, if they they feel like they can, uh, you know, they can make some dollars to give to the CCP, they'll 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 produce that knife for me. It's just that easy. Um, it don't matter if it's a good design, a bad design, ugly whether it cuts, whether it fidgets, what fidgets well, any of that. They don't truly care. All they care about is, is the money. But that's not what you have here, guys. Um, I don't know his whole story, but um, you know, I do know that at some point in Greg Medford's life, he decided that he wanted to be a knife designer, knife maker. Um, and he set out to do that. And what he did was he started making knives. Um, guys, I have personally made my own fixed blade knife. Um, I could have easily bought a Topps or an Essie, any, you know, really good high-end American-made fixed blade 
for less money than what it cost me to make my own. Um, however, I put some pride and value into that knife because I made it. Um, is it a great knife? No, it's not. Guys, it's not near as refined as I had pictured in my mind. It's not near as slicey as I wanted it. Um, but it is a functioning cutting tool that no doubt in my mind I could use on a daily basis and it would stand up to whatever I put it through. Um, but that's what Greg did. He started making knives. He started selling knives and he built that company until, um, you know, until he was the owner of Medford Knife and Tool and now, uh, you know, produces knives and sells them all over the world. And, you know, they're on several different knife websites you, you can go to and you can buy Medford. And, and I know that that idea seems kind of old school, you know, that you have to, you have to be hands-on, you have to have that knowledge and that ability to make things and build your name, um, you know, before you can have a, a successful company. And, and guys, to be honest with you, that is kind of going away. And that's not a knock at Greg. That's not a knock at the guys who are designing knives who, who couldn't build one if their life depended on it. It's just, it's just a sign of the times. It's the way things are. Are going you know you can build a little popularity get your name out there um especially you know if, if you're a good guy like my, my you know my buddy kevin over at lefty edc a lot of people love kevin they're gonna buy his knife because because it's his because his name's attached to it and I, and I don't have an issue with that um we could talk for hours on um you know what i would rather have seen happen in in that situation and, and kevin could talk for hours on the fact that he couldn't make that happen. And, and and all that makes sense. Everybody's right in this situation. But all I'm saying is is that Greg was one of the few people who set out to be a knife maker. And he succeeded by making, designing, and selling knives. Um, guys, that dream is not, it's not over. And the reason I say that is because, uh, you know, Alex Steingraber started making fixed blade knives and what he did was he set out to use premium steels and do the heat treats in a way that made those steels outperform what you could buy in a production knife. And it, there's a waiting list. Guys, you, you know, you're lucky if you own one because of it. You're also lucky to own one because it, it's going to outperform any other knife that you buy in that blade steel, more than likely. Because of his, his geometry and his heat treats, it's just a better product. Um, he took that success and he bought a CNC machine with no training. He taught himself how to use it. And now he's producing folding knives and they're not going to be cheap guys. And they shouldn't be cheap. Um, I wouldn't doubt at all either that, you know, this first batch that there's not an issue with it. Why is that? Well, it's not because Alex isn't a perfectionist, but it's because he just bought a CNC machine and taught himself how to use it. So let's cut him a little slack. You know, maybe they'll be perfect, but you know, another example was Tour Knives. You know, another veteran that set out to start his own knife company. Uh, you know, he, he, he didn't have to go through a, a foreign manufacturer. He did it the hard way. He did it the American way. And I hope that the return for that is hugely successful. Uh, you know, I know I've seen, you know, where Stasa 23 bought one of his knives and it had a, a fatal flaw and he sent it back. Um, yeah, you know, I know they're they're trying to work this stuff out, guys. You know, we have to be a little, you know, be a little patient with them. Um, you know, as long as they're willing to stand behind their product, and make it right, and in time, you know, they're they're that kind of thing is going to cease to happen. You know, they're 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 just going to make a better and better product as they go. But the thing is, is we have to give them that opportunity, and the only way we can give them that opportunity is to support them and buy their products. Give them some feedback, let them know what we like, what we dislike, and see what they do about it. And what they do about it is going to depend, is going to result in whether or not the company is successful. Um, I love that. You know, we, we just saw in, in the past year or two, this Axial Gear, this company popped up and started making OTFs, and now they're making, uh, you know, now they're making titanium frame lock folders. And, uh, for a, for a very reasonable price, you know, much cheaper than you can buy some uh, Chinese made folders. And, and I'm tickled to death about that. I'm not an OTF guy. I've never seen an OTF that I desired to own. 
If I was going to buy one, though, I would I would buy it from a company like that. Now, that's not to say that I, I have an issue with Microtech, because I don't. But Microtech's an established company. They're they're making money. They're selling their knives already. You know, so I'd love to support a company like Axial. You know, guys, the only reason I'm talking about this is bringing it up is to tell you that that it is possible. People are still doing it. So when somebody tells you, I can't get a knife made in the United States, that's not true. Um, maybe you can't draw a knife and a reputable maker decide, yeah, we'll sink our time, our money, everything that goes into running a business to make a knife in hopes that that it that your design sells. Um, I, I wouldn't... I probably wouldn't be willing to do that either. Um, you know, if, if you can't come to me and show me that you've that you've made knives and and you understand lock geometry and blade geometry and how to heat treat and how to, you know how to do a good grind, I'm probably not going to invest my time in you either. So, uh, but it is possible, guys. You know, there are guys out there that are doing it the hard way. They're doing it the right way. Um, you know, and now they've got successful knife companies because of it, and I hope they continue to thrive. That is not a knock at guys doing it the other way. You know, I've had conversations with several other content creators, and, and I understand their point. Um, you know, I get it. The only thing I don't get is when you just when you just paint a broad stroke with a brush and say that Benchmade and Spyderco are shit knives, it's just really disrespectful, man. It's, it's disrespectful to me. It should be disrespectful to you disrespectful to anybody that owns one anybody that loves them to me and maybe i'm just a little over patriotic but it's, it's disrespectful as an american um you know you don't have to you don't have to bash something somebody else loves in order to promote your thing and um that's the only point i'm trying to make so i know a lot of people think i'm an asshole sometimes in lives because i make arguments for American made knives and, and maybe I get a little passionate about it. For that I apologize. I'm not trying to hurt anybody's feelings. Um I'll come on your live, I'll watch your review of a Chinese made knife and listen to you talk about how great it is and I don't have a problem with that at all. Um that's 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 your option. You know, you you pick what you want to do in life and what you want to stand behind. You know, you show where your passion is by where you spend your money. That's your choice, man. I, you know, I raised my hand and signed those papers and agreed to die for your right to do so. So by all means, do what you want to do. I just, you know, I hate to keep bringing this up, man, but I, I'm begging you guys, man, these other content creators, please stop bashing American made knives just to defend your decision to support a communist country and their knife market. That's all I'm asking. Um, once again, guys, I appreciate any amount of time y'all spend with me. I want to give a huge shout out to Satu Dave for loaning me this knife. This is not a factory. Uh, this is not a factory knife. It, it's been customized by Dave. I don't know what all he's done to it. He's a very busy man because he's a hardworking American. He hasn't had time to get with me on what all modifications he's done. But uh, he was also a machinist, which is a dying trade in this country because we're sending all of our jobs overseas because we want cheaper knives. But anyway, guys, I appreciate any minute y'all spend with me. Peace, and I love y'all.